So a few weeks ago I was looking on eBay for pictures of some old electrical equipment because a lot of the older antique stuff isn't well documented from before the 1930s. Like for instance, knife switches like this, although this one's a little bit later. A lot of these, you don't know about them until you find them. So I was just kind of looking through to see what I could find. Well, I happened to find something that I actually wanted to buy instead of just looking at the pictures. This is a, I'd say 1940s or 1950s, a little bit later than what I was wanting, but I'm just wanting for the functionality of, na of a mechanical switch, so this is actually going to be pretty good. Now, a lot of these ones are actually pretty expensive because a lot of people try to buy them for like uh, haunted houses and stuff like that for like Frankenstein switches, I guess, just because it's, it's that kind of style. But I wanted actually to use, so this actually works pretty good because this has a very good build quality. Main thing you can notice though, it's missing a handle. So, that's kind of unfortunate, but it actually wasn't unfortunate to me, for me because it lowers the price, makes it easier to get, and my friend happens to have a 3D printer. So, I went to his house and I modeled this up in Blender real quick. It only took me about 25 minutes, then took me about two hours to print. I printed, printed it pretty quick though. I made it in Blender actually, and it's really simple. It's just, I made a, I made a cube and I made this cylinder and extruded it and then I just kinda like linked them together and cut the bottom out so now it's that although I didn't, I, I was thinking this pretty printer was a little bit more like inexact so I made, I made it have too much clearance to where it rattles on there but to be honest I'm not that too concerned about it I think that it can still do fine if we glue it on I'd rather have more opening than too tight because then it'd be hard to waller that out the really nice thing about using 3D printed parts is that you can just glue them with acetone because the acetone melts or dissolves the plastic as if like imagine this is salt and you're putting water on it it's the same thing if you put acetone on plastic it dissolves it so it, it, it'll, like, it, it'll like make it all mushy and tacky until the acetone evaporates then it goes back to the same plastic so I think that what we can do is oh. Look at that. Hey, acetone plastic. Works for me. That's interesting. I've never had it bind up like that before. And there we go. It should be okay. I'll just put some more on there on the outside. That's unfortunate though that pops. But whatever. The thing is, it's plastic. I mean, well, it's ABS plastic, so it's really easy to fix. I'm just gonna f try to finish this. You know, to be honest, I can actually probably use this to smooth out the rest of it. Although I liked it as it was before, but having that one line on there, that kind of messes it up. I don't know. Either way, I can always fix it up later. But I want to get it on there, so... I'm going to put that like that. I'm going to drip some acetone in there. Now, I probably should add some filler material, but whatever. This will have to do. Sit in there fine. I recommend in the future, if you actually want to make proper like 3D printing glue, this is a just raw acetone so it's clear, but take all your broken 3D prints and toss them in here, shake it up, and all that, all the plastic will dissolve into the acetone so it'll make like a glue. So that should be better. It's now been drying for about a day, a little bit under a day actually, and it's pretty strong, I think. It's worked out pretty well. In retrospect, maybe I should have printed another one with a higher percentage so it's more solid plastic because it, as you maybe saw before when I broke it off, it's actually more like a lattice, it's like a honeycomb in there. 
So I might actually print another one that's like a higher per percentage of thickness in case this one breaks. Then I can put that one on there. Well, what we have now is, of course, this white stuff. So I should be able to just sand this off. So what do you guys think? I don't know how I feel about that finish. Might get some th some finer sandpaper in the future and go over it again. But to be honest, I think it fits okay for now. It's better than what well, than it was before, that's for sure. So evidently, I must have resolved the issue that was making the acetone turn it white. And I probably did that inadvertently last night, because see, I ripped open a laptop battery pack to get the plastic because I thought it was ABS so I tried to, to dissolve it into the acetone thinking it was ABS it looks like it wasn't but it looks like it did strip out the like the colorant or whatever they used to color it so the acetone is all kind of tinged dark purple now and it looks like that is keeping it from going all like white when it dries at least it did just then so I should be able to like coat this to give it a nice slick finish oh wow that actually seemed to do the trick Amazing. I don't think the hot air gun helped at all. But who knows? I'm quite happy with that. I just temporarily screwed it into our shitty fence just so I can have something to mount it to because I don't have any wood to mount it to besides this. But I'm actually pretty happy with this. Handle seems a little bit loose, so I might work on version 2 and make it a little better. But I'm happy with this. If I don't get around to making version 2, this is good enough for me. I feel like that's really been worth it. Didn't take me much time, really. That finish, it's good enough. At least for version 1. So yeah, still trying to make, make out what this is, ma is made out of. I think that's like either compressed wood chips or some kind of plastic. It's weird. I'm just going to flip it a few more times before I take it off. It's just, I love how, how nice these are to flip. I'm really glad I bought this one. At first I was kind of afraid that it would, wouldn't would look as cool, but I think it's I think it's neat and it's ni nice. Blech. Although, of course, if I have electricity on it, it'll shoot sparks, and that will be much cooler. Well, at least if it's under load, but oh well. I'm hoping that then the next shed I build will be a proper nice shed that'll, like, make it up to code or whatever, and I'll, I can have electricity and stuff in there. Well, when I add the electricity, though, I'm going to use a lot of older stuff. Okay, structurally up to code, not electrically up to code, that's for sure. But... I mean, there's really not that many codes in, in Illinois that I'd have to really care about for a shed, I don't think. Well, I think I could have a couple knife switches and my Cutler Hammer, cut, cutler hammer Rio stat and some old motors and stuff. That would just be kind of cool to have like a vintage ele electrical system. Hopefully it'd be cool to find like an old DC generator. Like the one that Ozzy50 has, that, that old Westinghouse. That we need we run off, off steam power or something like that. Who knows? Either way, for the time being, we're going to keep collecting this stuff because it is freaking cool. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching. See ya!